Hello dear gamers, Yorkfield here and today we are back on the 6th episode of our playthrough on DDLC. So, we are now going to finally write a third poem, not just for the Doki Doki, but also for a festival apparently. That's what Monica said in the last episode. So, yep, I hope it will be a good one. I hope I'm not gonna get scared or anything else. And I remember last time, um, Yuri wanted to walk with me home instead of Sayori, which made me laugh a little bit, so, yeah. Without further ado, let's -a go! Here we are, now let's write this poem quick. Extreme, oh, okay, I am a core to extreme processor, so I'm gonna also choose extreme. See, who is that about? Yuri, okay. <laughs> I did not think it was for Yuri, but okay. Dance, beauty, color, giggle, explode again, <laughs> hair, amazing, joy, uh, intellectual, kawaii, <gasps> suicide again, what, what is going on, what is going on with this game, <laughs> oh my god. Peace. Um, no, not lazy. Bliss. Hope. Shiny. Uh, rainbow. Uh, peaceful. Uh, marshmallow. And last but not least, heartbeat. Oh, okay, that was not the last one. Sorry about that. So, last but not least. Let's do smile. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. What, you practicing pipe piano again? Yeah. Uh, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now you're picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. <coughs> but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you? And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Finally, I see Natsuki smiling. Because, as mentioned many, many times, Natsuki often doesn't smile or is unhappy. Finally, I see Natsuki smiling or being happy. Finally, damn it. Ah! Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You should... you sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica! Do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Nah, eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Or Monica. Ah! That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on your uh, own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Ah! You're spacing out again. Ah, oh. <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Ah! Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed about anything about Sayori recently. 
Since they have been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Yorkfield, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up about s with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Yorkfield. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything. So I'll drop it now. No, no! It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Yorkfield. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayuri talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Yorkfield. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know what I won't be able to get her words out of her, my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she is keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from her from here. I and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and I have to fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her Then I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now I feel like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay everyone, after some time passes, Monica calls calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everything goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Who should I show my poem to first? Okay, we're just gonna do Sayori first. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Yorkfield. Uh, thanks. Hmm. Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Ah! Of course! Everything's fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Uh, do you want to nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Yorkfield. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poem like the way Yuri does, or even Natsuki, but in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do, but that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something, and this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. 
So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? No! Yorkfield! I don't deserve this! You're too nice to me! Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori! I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will chew you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself to and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Yorkfield. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Okay, so I think I'm having a bit too much feelings for Sayori in this game. Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. I guess if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. But I should I leave her for B for now? That's it! <laughs> okay, she didn't say any th feedback about my poem. What the hell? Okay, she doesn't like it, I guess. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. Doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden. Well, I don't know, but honestly, I can... How can someone so... Uh, fluffy... Spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Oh, uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If we weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like getting, letting go of a balloon. You could say, we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go, a shore reading beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light, the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. It'll be the beach that washes your worries away, it'll- I'll be the beach, sorry, that you daydream about each day, I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way, you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Ba bath in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. I remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn how to love yourself again. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first and then came up with the message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic about and have us both write about it or whatever. I see. I don't really have much to contribute here since I didn't actually read Yuri's poem. Ugh, you can really see her doing that too? Making us write about a simple topic and then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too, but there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Okay, Monica is last. 
Hi, Yorkfield. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club in one thing, but performing in the front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ah, anyway, let's take a good look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Ah, it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayuri's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're in so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Ah, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't seen, been seeing as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about how Sayori has been a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Ah, well, Yorkville, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something, something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sayori has been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened to all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky. Victim of the currents of the wind. Le day after day, I search, I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is that all remains the last dim star glimmering in the twilled sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry gill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful day. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. Or gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There's no meaning, there's no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I'm not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with the breath, she blows me black afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but if it was kind of my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing, writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you a little surprised? Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, you wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you've put so much into. But if you find the other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a sec! Is this, is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Ah! Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated it from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. 
Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yudi isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe? Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's like almost everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she went, just went to pay. Natsuki, please show me show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey dovey. Ah, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh! That curious expression coming from Yudi of all people? Calm down, guys. I'll talk to her earlier and everything's fine. What did you say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all you by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can... Ah, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Now Natsuki is pouting too. Jeez, can I even tell now? I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you Yorkfield, the one who is truly useless. <sighs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It will probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica is going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on our butt anyway. <laughs> Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um... If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Yorkfield may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're make just making excuses for Yorkfield to... What are you saying? It would be extremely meliticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Yorkfield to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah. Yorkfield, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. Hmm, very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... Uh... Yuri. Well, I probably be most useful helping out Yuri. 
Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you you are about to say something mean. No, I was just saying, ugh. So you'll be fine helping you did any work field? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bit bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, you'll be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said you will, I would find. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Yorkfield? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it, it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. You, what about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. Ah, you anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Yorkfield picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really go well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event would compare to that, so. So, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheat me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back, aback by Yudi's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up would must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yudi was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if, she, if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I can't appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out of the door as they chat between each other. Um... Yeah? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't, I can't believe I've slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Uh-oh. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Ah! My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm, I'm the one helping you. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide to not press Yudi for a reason. It's not like I sh it should matter much either way, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to myself useful in some way. I'm not really as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Yorkfield. I think that will make for a very, very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... Yudi thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yudi, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you what I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yudi thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yudi finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yudi follows. I can't believe this. Yudi is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots up through the roof. 
even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what I might up end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have for making something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to make my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this part 6 of DDLC. So we'll be back next week in the game, or on Sunday in the game. And we'll be back on the next episode to help Yuri for the festival. So thanks for watching, stay safe, take care of you, peace, bye!